ओम ज्ञानतिरांधस्ञानाजनिशलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति भक्तिवेदातस्वामीनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीरएत In this session, we'll be discussing from two verses, the 17th and the 18th verses of the 16th chapter of the first canto of Shri Mad Bhagavatam. The 17th verse is as follows: Tasyaivam vartamanasya purvesham vritti manvaham nati dure kilascharyam yadasi tan nibodhame. The meaning of this verse is as follows. Now you may hear from me of what happened while Maharaj Parikshit was passing his days hearing of the good occupations of his forefathers and being absorbed in thought of them. So this has reference to the previous few verses in which um Sutta Goswami is describing the regime of Maharaj Parikshit If you remember the Pandavas retired after they heard that Krishna has gone to his personal abode after winding up his past times and before retiring they Yudhishthira Maharaj handed over charge of ruling the world to Parikshit Maharaj so Parikshit Maharaj was trained he took charge and he performed he got married he had uh, uh, good sons headed by janmejaya and uh, he performed three horse sacrifices under the able guidance of qualified acharyas brahmanas and he was ruling very nicely so when he went out for conquest he heard everywhere he went how uh, the pandavas who were ruling before him actually were great devotees of the supreme lord krishna and how the pandavas were able to actually uh, get from krishna anything they desired because of their service attitude towards the supreme lord so it was described that uh, krishna who is a supreme lord he rendered service to the pandavas by accepting posts ranging from chariot driver to president to messenger to friend to night watchman uh, like that krishna is willing to do anything for his devotees and devotees are com- Completely surrender to Krishna. They simply want to please Krishna in whichever way Krishna wants them to actually serve Him. So this is the wonderful relationship that exists between Krishna and His pure devotees in the spiritual world. And even in the material world, when Krishna incarnates, He comes down with His. Uh, confidential associates and he demonstrates to us what is life like in the spiritual world so that's what krishna is demonstrating in his relationship with the pandavas in his relationship with kunti in his relationship with draupadi in his relationship with uh, yashoda nanda maharaj the whole uh, brajavasis the mathura nivasis the dwarka nivasis the yadu uh, members of the yadu dynasty 
they were all so attached to Krishna. Uh, so, uh, actually each one of us have got a relationship with Krishna and we are meant to actually revive that relationship especially when we have this human form of body. Because we realize in the human form of body, I don't want suffering but it is forced on me. I want to know who am I, I want to know what is my source. Huh? Where was I before birth? What will happen to me after death? So these uh, questions are um, best answered in our Vedic literature, the Vedas. They are very special because they answer these fundamental questions and not only they answer the question, they show us the way out of this predicament that we are in right now. We don't want suffering but suffering is forced from us. So we can become free from all suffering if we study the Vedas, hear from the Vedas or learn the Vedas and adopt a, a lifestyle which is in accordance with uh, the Vedic principles. Uh, the Vedic principles meant for uh, those human beings who want to make a permanent solution to all their problems and get out of all this entanglement. So now Sutta Goswami is going to describe when Parikshit Maharaj was ruling and he was passing his days hearing of the good occupation of his forefathers, what happened? I mean already it has been told that uh, Parikshit was ruling uh, when Kali Yuga was just beginning. So what are the symptoms of Kali and what are the remedies for the, uh, the um, specific uh, conditions in Kali Yuga which are unfavorable for peaceful and living and for prosperity of the people. So he is, uh, Sutta Goswami is going to describe this now. In the 18th verse he says, Dharma padai kena charan vichhayam upalabhyagam prichatis mashru vadanam vivatsam ivamataram the meaning of this verse is, now Sutta Goswami is addressing the sages of Naimisharanya. He is telling, the personality of religious principles, dharma, was wandering about in the form of a bull. And he met, that is dharma, met the personality of earth in the form of a cow, who appeared to grieve like a mother who had lost her child. She had tears in her eyes and the beauty of her body was lost. Thus Dharma questioned the earth as follows. So what will follow after this 18th verse are the questions, various questions asked by Dharma to Mother Earth. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada uh, comments, on this uh, condition of Mother Earth uh, in the form of a cow in which uh, Dharma found her wandering when he was wandering. So Srila Prabhupada says, uh, the bull is the emblem of the moral principle. What is the meaning of emblem? Emblem is a symbolic representation of uh, something. Just like the moral principles that human beings follow in human society uh, are, uh, are reflected in the condition of the bull, are reflected in the condition of the bull. 
and the cow is the representative of the earth. Cow is uh, the uh, representative of the earth. So, mother earth in the form of a cow is indicating what is the status of the earth in Kali Yuga. And bull is indicating the status of the population in terms of moral principles that they follow or do not follow. So, Srila Prabhupada says, when the bull and the cow are in a joyful mood, it is to be understood that the people of the world are also in a joyful mood. People are happy and are very joyful if the bull and cow are in a joyful mood. This bull and cow are very important domestic animals. Perhaps you are aware that animals are divided into two categories, the domestic and the wild animals. Wild animals live in the forest and uh, th there the law of the jungle prevails. Hmm? There is no uh, um, taming the animals except nowadays in circus. Of course, that is also now stopped by uh, Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, a society like that. They have stopped this. Uh, uh, they are trying to bring restrictions different governments are telling that animals, wild animals should not be exploited for entertaining uh, uh, the people in general. So, the circus taming a wild animal that is no longer uh, um, encouraged or permitted by so many governments. Anyway, so the wild animals live in the jungle and there the uh, very nature of those animals is such that nature regulates them in their in uh, nature's own way. Whereas these domestic animals, they are dependent for protection and engagement in a specific uh, way on the human society. Just like. <clears throat> um, cows, bulls uh, and uh, goats and sheep and uh, dogs and cats. Hmm? All these are domestic animals. They very easily are um, befriended by any human being, very easily. Hmm? And they give some service and they are also taken care. They are uh, given some food or they are given some shelter or they are given some, uh, some kind of uh, protection. <clears throat> there is reciprocation also with these domestic animals. So, uh, among all the domestic animals, the most important uh, are the bull and the cow. Why? So, uh, Prabhupada says because the bull is the emblem of moral principles in human society and cow is the representative of the earth. And scriptures, the Vedic scriptures especially uh, recommend that human society should particularly protect the bull and the cow, particularly they should protect the bull and the cow. Why? Because the bull helps production of grains in the agricultural field, not only production of grains, the bulls are used in so many ways, at least in the Vedic culture for drawing water from the well, uh, for um, uh, removing the husk from the uh, grains after they are grown. Uh, for extracting oil from oil seeds, uh, for transportation, uh, the bullock cart, hmm, the bull can pull, it has got immense amount of uh, 
the strength to do all these activities. And the cow delivers milk, the miracle of aggregate food values. Uh, so, uh, cow is specially meant for giving us milk, which is meant for our um, well-being, that it contains all the nourishment and nutrition that we require as human beings, particularly the cow's milk is highlighted. So, if the cow and bull are protected for the good of human society, then uh, there is advancement of Brahmanical culture. Brahmanical culture is a culture meant for self-realization, spiritual realization, spiritual advancement. And if the bull and cow are neglected or worse still, they are killed for being eaten as food, so, that is done by people who do not know the value of Brahmanical. Culture. They are uncultured, uncivilized, non Brahmanical uh, people. Because they have no spiritual values in life, they have no higher goal in life. Simply they live like for eating, sleeping, mating, defending like animals they live. So then if the cow and bull are mistreated then the whole human society has to suffer in so many ways and that is what is going to be described in the next few verses. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.